So, welcome back to another episode, and you guys know by now, I'm a very nostalgic person. I, I'm nostalgic about being nostalgic, but, man, I just heard this news the other day, and it just, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Chrono Trigger is 20 years old. That took me a little bit to process, and it made me feel a lot older. Uh, I've done a few of these videos where I, you know, talk about some of my old memories, about when I first bought the games, and I just can't believe 20 years has gone by. So, I thought today I'd just share a few of my memories of Chrono Trigger when it came out. And I highly recommend to you guys, down below, if you were there day one for Chrono Trigger, please tell a story. Tell everybody how you came to discover this amazing RPG back in the day. And the first thing I gotta do is, this has been on the shelf since I began the show. And I don't know if I've ever taken it off. I think I may have taken it off one site. You know, you know maybe six years ago. But here we go. Here is my original copy of Chrono Trigger. Now, before I get into Chrono Trigger, I just gotta give a little bit of a backstory. We all knew as RPG fans back then that Chrono Trigger was coming out. And we were all very excited about it. It was by Squaresoft, one of our favorite developers of the Final Fantasy series. We held them in high, high regard, and they had, you know, we had good reason for that. So, this game Chrono Trigger was coming out, and it had Akira Toriyama artwork. That was a huge thing, and I still say Akira Toriyama in his, like, prime, you know? This is 20 years ago. And I saw the character designs, first of all, and it was very, very exciting. I just, I just loved the main character, uh, the sword, I loved the female, the, the, the robot, the frog character. I didn't know what the fuck any of it was about because the game wasn't out yet. But I was excited about it. We were always reading in video game magazines. It was really exciting stuff. So, I'll never forget, I was 21, 21 years old. I'm 41 right now. I was 20, you know, 21. And it was a beautiful summer. And I'd gone to England to live. I'd gone back to, to Yorkshire, England, where I grew up. And I spent the summer out there, just, you know, just kind of finding my roots, kind of, for se. And I came back and I started going out with this, uh, Chinese girl and she took me to this mall I'd never been to in all of Vancouver. It's, it's a legendary mall, uh, Johan Center out here. It's, it's really, really great. So while I was there, she took me she took me around to a lot of Japanese stores, to a lot of Chinese stores, and uh, there was this one amazing bookstore. And I walked in and I'm looking around and all of a sudden I just saw to my left, not the game. Something, I, I didn't know what it was, it was this. I, at first I thought it was the game, I'm like, is this the Japanese version of the game? What? No, then I'm like, no, it can't possibly be. And then I realized it was the, the original soundtrack. So, the game had just come out in Japan, and the soundtrack was released. We weren't getting it for another five months. So, the soundtrack was staring at me, these characters, and this is my original copy of that as well. And I, 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 this was crazy, and this bookstore, let me tell you, was fucking expensive. It was ridiculous. Everything was $20 more than what it ever should have been. So, I think the soundtrack should have been around, then again, Japanese sound, like, CD soundtracks are very, you know, very expensive. And this is an original. It was $59. $59. Almost the price of the game. And I, I, it was, you know, it was so funny back then before the internet, the build-up that you would do for a game. Well, I would personally would do, me and Rob would personally do. We were ridiculous. And I brought this home, and I remember just sitting with it every single night. Let me just see the CD here. Uh, every single night, listening to the music, guessing what the music was gonna be about. So I'd listen to one track, and I'd be like, oh, this has gotta be the forest music. And I was completely wrong for, for a lot of it, for a lot of my guesses, but it was three CDs, it was heavenly, and the music, that's the one thing that got me from the game right off the bat. I, I hadn't played the game, I hadn't seen the game ever moving, how could I? I didn't have the internet, nobody had the internet back then, it didn't exist. So, but the music, the music was great off the bat, we, you know, I would listen to them and go, this is incredible stuff. So I was listening to the music five months before the game came out. And it was good, I was happy, it was great. So, flash forward five months uh, into the future, my friend Andrew, who I grew up with down the street, great friend of mine, great video game friend of mine, 
And back then it was hard to find a video game friend uh, that you could really relate to. And me and Andrew have always, you know, been such good friends since then. He was down, down the street. The problem was when I was uh, 20, he moved to the University of Calgary, which was quite quite far away. So we only kept in contact via the, the phone. <laughs> and so what was great is Andrew came out for a week uh, when Chrono Trigger was released. Pure coincidence, pure coincidence timing. And he was as fanatical as I was. We really were nuts about this stuff. I told you the story about Final Fantasy VI, how he got it and you know, he's really excited. In a way, this is this is kind of where I, I, I get my revenge. I've never I've kind of never kind of pieced it together this way. <laughs> but so Andrew was over. We went to a video game store and I saw it. And I'm like, oh my god, Chrono Trigger's out. I, I forget how I knew it was out. Nobody told me. I don't believe anybody told me. I'm like, Andrew, you know, we've gotta go get the money for this. So I remember I had a hundred dollar bill. And that was huge for me when I was 21. I didn't, you know, I just come back from England. I didn't have a lot of money, but I had a hundred dollar bill. And I went back to this video game store, which is Willow Video Games, and I put the hundred dollars down. And it, the game, just to get an idea, the game was ninety nine dollars, ninety nine dollars back then. So ridiculous, right? So ridiculous. But this beautiful little game. So I bought the game, brought it home. And I said to Andrew, I said, I'm going to go play it. He's like, well, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see any of the spoilers. I'm like, well, sorry, man. I'm, I'm going to play it. I said, I've been waiting way too long for this. And it was so funny. He was so mad at me. I went into my room and I shut the door. And I, bam, put on Chrono Trigger. And wonderful things were happening in that room. It was awesome. But he was out in the other room just sitting with my dad watching whatever was on television. <laughs> And I didn't come out. I didn't come out for five hours. I, I kept going out going, oh my god, Andrew, it's so good. Oh my god, it's so good. He's like, fuck you, you bastard. And I'd run back into my room. I've always remembered that story. We were emailing each other back and forth before I shot this video. We were reminiscing about how silly that was. But um, that's how big the game was. It was, and it was a funny memory for us. And did the game live up to the hype? It did. It really did. You know, anybody out there who hasn't played it, it's a, a great RPG by Squaresoft. If I haven't already mentioned it, you've got to play it. It's a true classic. A lot of people ask me a, a really great question, why I didn't include it in my top 10 console RPG games of all time. And that is a great question. You know, for me, Chrono Trigger, I love the game. I, I mean, I don't just love the game, I adore the game. I, I did artwork when I was 21, before the game came out. Just sell artwork. You know, we would paint, but I was so inspired by the game. But why didn't I put it into my top 10? I think the reason why when I was making my list, there was a lot of games that I wanted to mention that don't sometimes get any hype, like Lost Odyssey, and Lunar sometimes doesn't get as much hype as it could get. And I really wanted to mention those games for, for that fact. And so selfishly, I kind of pulled Chrono, Chrono Trigger back. And I also, th I also thought in my mind that Chrono Trigger, over the years, has gotten so much, um, you know, time by everybody. Everybody's given it so much affection. Everybody knows. It's almost like, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, you know, I don't mean to be so obvious about it. Chrono Trigger stands on its own. It is that incredible. And I played the game that summer. I had, that summer was a great summer. Uh, just before that, Earthbound came out. And then, uh, you know, Chrono Trigger came out. It was just some really great memories when I was 21, I can't tell you enough and and Andrew eventually got his copy when he went back to to university and he probably uh, was was failing in a few courses back then because of it but uh, we got to experience that and it was I'm, I'm really happy that I was there for uh, Chrono Trigger day one you know I'm really happy about it it's it's all these years later and it's 20 years later I just I can't believe it and there there was a sequel and it's a controversial sequel Chrono Cross and I a lot of people hate the game, and I don't hate it. Here's what I want to say about that. I don't think it's a Chrono Trigger 2, and it's not supposed to be. I think it's a side game, more than it is anything else, and I think it's a, I think it's a good game in its own right, but it's not a Chrono Trigger 2. And let me tell you, isn't it fucked up when you think of a company like Square Enix now, that used to be Square, just Square Soft, and they're sh at times having, they're, they're struggling a lot of times, you know, creating games and stuff like that. And to me, 
the answers are right there in front of them. This is a license to print money at Square Enix. Hire Akira Toriyama, okay? Get him to do all the character designs, create a cool battle system, create a cool time travel scenario, make it next gen, include, you know, maybe get the main character, but maybe make his hair blue. I don't fucking know. I don't make games. I just adore them. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to make a ton load of money. I know every single hardcore fan out there, beside myself, would be fucking gushing this game out to uh, everyone on the internet. Everybody would be, you gotta get fucking Chrono Trigger 2. We all feel that way. We all want it. We've never gotten it. We've never understood why. We've lost faith in this company. We don't understand why they would never do such a thing. But I gotta tell you, what wonderful memories uh, with Chrono Trigger. And I, I just wanted to share a bit of my memories of it when it came out, how expensive it was and the hype towards it. And the hype was worth it. The game was a success right out, without question. And this copy of my game, you know, it's unfortunate it's missing a few things inside because I, the game was so good, I wanted everybody else to experience it, all my friends in the neighborhood. This game is Mr. Sloppy Seconds. It is being, you know, passed around to so many of my friends. And to be honest, the box is in pretty good condition. Guys, I just wanted to share some of my Chrono Trigger memories of the 20th anniversary of fucking Chrono Trigger. Can you believe it's 20 years? So if you remember it, please leave a comment below. Tell me how important Chrono Trigger is to you, what an amazing game it is, and all that great stuff. So anyways, guys, until next time.